everyone, welcome to Build. I'm Simon Atkins. As always, we're coming to you live from London. Now, today I'm joined by a presenter and a YouTuber who has openly explored issues facing the LGBTQI community and now has the accolade of author under his belt. Here to talk about his new book, Yay, You're Gay, Now What? Please welcome Ria Khalif. <laughs> How are you? I love that we're going, hi, 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 like we haven't hi. spoken out there for 10 minutes. <laughs> now listen, before we talk about all about you and your and your new book, yeah. um, if you guys at home want to get involved and ask Riyadh a question, you absolutely can. You can tweet us at Bill Series LDN or leave a comment below this video if you're watching live on Facebook. Riyadh. Nice oh, thank you for having ages. me. I've watched so many of these. Oh, great. So I feel like a real star. <laughs> this is cool. <laughs> now, listen, we're going to talk about all about your new book yeah. in, in, in a moment. Uh, obviously, kind of the reason why you're here. But first of all, let's talk about you. Um, and let's start off, um, you know, when you were kind of like growing up mm. and, and gay in, in Ireland. What was it like back then? Um, and has it changed much? To what oh, happened? yeah. I think of any country that I can think of, Ireland is probably the fastest changing when it comes to what it's like to be LGBT and live there. So th when I came out, it was pre-marriage equality, um, and it was still quite shameful in a lot of ways. There was still a lot of bullying. There was absolutely no um, same-sex sex and relationships education in schools. Um, and then things started to change kind of a little bit too late for me, but... And then you got out of there. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> bye, but no. I, I love going back home now because the Ireland that I go back to... Um, it's a much more progressive Ireland, isn't it's, it? I'm proud yeah. to be from there. I mean, look, this is a picture of my mom and I um, campaigning for the, the marriage equality yes vote. Um, it was back in 2015. Yeah. And you, so so you are you you are quite an activist and a, and a campaigner, and as you said, you, you campaigned for that in two thousand and fifteen. What was it like um, that day when it was voted mm. through? Oh, Such magical. a huge, huge um, day, like globally. Mm. So I I had been campaigning since I was about sixteen years old. Um, just not not on purpose as an activist. I call myself an accidental activist. Right. I was only <laughs> going to those rallies because I needed to find people like me. Uh, and I thought, oh, I hear about the queer community. Who are they? Oh, they go and they shout things at politicians on the street. I'm going to go. And um, I very quickly started to learn that there was a cause here that I was supposed to be fighting for with um, my brothers, sisters, and siblings. And then... Um, the day came, after all those years, the day came uh, where we got the yes vote through and we were at Dublin Castle, centre of Dublin. The sun was beaming. Um, God felt happy about the gays that day. <laughs> and um, th the vote count came in and it was a yes. And thousands of people just started screaming, cheering and crying, including myself. And I remember my mom and dad were on either side of me and we just, we just embraced each other, bawling our eyes out, thinking, we did it, we did it, we did it. And what we meant by we is not just us. But the entire country. The country. You know, here I am with my mother, father, and best friend in my beautiful city where we had shown the world, look, as a country, the first country in the world to have a public vote in same-sex marriage, we did it. And uh, all the cars on the street stopped. They were all beating what their horns. Dublin buses, fire brigades. Yeah. And then we went out and got... Um, Absolutely hammered. <laughs> oh, you can say that? We can say that. Okay. I love that. We got shit-faced. <laughs> um, now, was this before your YouTubing career? Um, and did that have anything to do with spurring on, you know, what you... Because you, you do speak so openly now about, you know, your kind of your, your um, homosexuality and, you know, your kind of views on, on kind of sexuality um, via the medium of YouTube and other channels. But, you know, uh, has that had to anything to do with it? Uh, yeah. I think I started making videos on YouTube just for fun because I was born an attention seeker. I was that annoying <laughs> kid at the back of class who wouldn't shut up. And YouTube was an outlet for, for that annoyingness. And very quickly I learned that actually the stuff I was making was helping people. When I, I had no intention of helping people, if I'm honest, in the early days. And then when I realized that, I thought, OK, that I should do more of this. And I should show people how, although it can be awful, it can also turn into a, a beautiful story in the end. So. Um, the the YouTube sort of gave, YouTube gave me a voice and a platform to spread a message of acceptance and to kind of show these young people in the middle of Arkansas or Pakistan yeah. or Indonesia that it's you know, okay it's okay and you might be in a place where it's illegal to be who you are but at least you can live vicariously 
through the internet and, and through these videos and my friends' videos. It's not ideal, but my God, at least they have that. Yeah, and that, that outlet to show them that there are other people out there that are like them. That as, community as said, I was looking okay. for. Yeah. They, we exist out there. And also I tell, I tell people who happen to be in situations like that, you know, hold tight, um, keep strong, um, keep in contact with your community globally through the internet. But then when you can, when you have the means to get out, get to the big city, get to the country that can accept you if you can, um, and do all you can to, to do that. Or, you know, there are organizations who um, help people uh, who are, th their life is under, under threat to get out. So um, get in contact with them. Um, let's talk about your family for a second, because you are from a mixed race f Irish family, as am I. I'm half Irish, half Burmese, and you are half, half Iraqi. Irish, half Iraqi. Yeah. Um, and, you know, obviously, when did you come out to your parents? Uh, I came out to mom at 16, 17, and then dad uh, about nine months later. And was your sexuality an open conversation in the house? I mean, obviously, uh, before you came out, it wasn't. No. But, you know, just t talk us through that and, and what that whole um, time of your life um, was a very poignant time for, mm. for any gay man, really. Yeah, so I, I, I knew what I was. In, in the book, I talk about this thing called the PCO, the pre-coming out stage. And that is the point at which you've told yourself and accepted yourself as you are, but you haven't told a single soul uh, beyond that. And for me, that was four years. And during those four years, you're terrified that this big, dark secret is going to get out. Knows about yeah, yeah, the big yeah. pink elephant in the room, yeah. as I call it. It's like, how did you not know? Look at me. And, <laughs> um, and then <laughs> once I told my friends in school and then m mom found out, it was all this weight off my shoulder, weight off my shoulder. And I, fe I felt like I was beginning to breathe. I, I felt like I couldn't breathe before I, I had come out. And I just noticed, Mammy walking into, into the, the studio. Room. Hey. Uh, we don't have a camera to put on her yet, but, but we are going to be talking to yeah. her in a little bit. Uh, hi, Mom. She's just off the plane. We're going to Barcelona tomorrow. <laughs> um, so a couple of wines no. tonight. <laughs> um, but no, it, it was extremely <laughs> difficult. But the buzz, I'm sure you know what it's like. The buzz, each time you tell another person is just... <gasps> and the elation yeah. of it. Yeah, yeah You yeah. love me. You don't yeah. hate me. You still want <gasps> to be you my, my friend? friend? You still want to be my father? Yeah. Okay. Um, but so listen, let's talk about why you're here. So you've written a book called Yay, You're Gay! Now, now what? what? And it's a gay guy, it's a gay guide to, you know, to, 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 to life. To life, really. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about the book and what you discuss in it and what kind of subjects you talk about in it. Oh, uh, and I can't talk. Yeah, about, let's do it. Let's about, do it. We, we I, wa I was on the radio the other day and I talked, I said, oh yeah, we talk about awkward boners and wet dreams and the uh, presenter was like, ah! Cut, cut, um, advert. So we, ha we have, there's a, a section on, on a sex, sex education, about your body, it's changing, you're going through pu puberty and all of that. But then there's a lot about, you know, the ins and outs, the mechanics of how to come out in a safe way and the protections that you should um, make sure you have before you make that jump. Just in case something goes wrong, you don't want to find yourself out of school or without a, a, a roof over your head, without food. Um, I know these sound like really basic things, but you, you have to consider that I know, in, in it's today's like world. Yeah. Uh, and we've also got things like, you know, um, how to deal with your first crush. We've both fancied the straight boy in school who doesn't <laughs> love us back. Um, how to get over breakups and, and how to find your community and in your a tribe, safe way. And your tribe, your tribe. Find your tribe. Um, but also you talk about your bullying and, and homophobia and that stuff is, it's really important, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I think we, uh, you know, as, as um, adults who are out there, you know, in the working world now, we think that maybe everything is okay for young people who are different, but really it's, it hasn't changed that much. Um, I'm getting these messages from young people around the world daily. My mom gets them daily uh, and parents even contact mom. And the situation is still dire for a lot of young people in school because we have schools like um, Parkfield in Birmingham who've cut out uh, LGBT relationship education. Completely. Yeah, because the parents are protesting that it's against the religious think freedoms. you adding it in in this day and age, yeah. wouldn't you? But the thing is, is that I always say homophobia, racism or hate of any kind isn't innately in someone. It's learned behaviour. And if you're a straight kid who happens to find themselves in a school and you're hearing that, oh, the LGBT class has been cut because the parents don't like it and it's bad. That's what you're getting. It's bad. It's then the homophobia mm. begins in your in your soul as kind of, 
oh, I don't really talk to people who are gay. And then it turns into, oh, I don't really like people who are gay. And then in adulthood, I hate people who are gay. So if you're not educating uh, straight and LGBT people from a young age that these individuals exist, they're real, they're, yeah. they're going to be working with you and, and you know maybe even your best friend. If you don't teach them that, then um, you're setting them up for a life of uh, potential hatred because of lack of education. And living in a bubble of, of hatred. And it's like... It's yeah. I, I, I'm really surprised actually of what you said about how the yeah. schools taking that yeah. And, out and the, the of worrying the thing is that it might become a domino effect that other schools will will pick up on. You know, I, I believe that religious freedom is incredibly important, as is any type of um, you know belief or freedom. But I also believe that your religious freedom must end at the point at which the discrimination from my people begins. That's the moment where we've got to call it out. Um, and, and Parkfield is, is, although it's a difficult place, it's a difficult time for the, for the kids in that school, um, at least it started a conversation. And um, uh, I think the government have pressure on them now, both in the UK and in Ireland and the States, to kind of bring a little bit more representation, representation in for kids who aren't straight and cisgender. Yeah. Um, so you dedicated a whole chapter in the book to your parents. Yeah. So um, tell us a little bit about um, why you did that and what's in that section. Lorraine. <laughs> oh, me or Lorraine? No, you. Oh, sorry. I thought you were talking. We will, um, we will talk to yeah, you, Lorraine. Yeah, yeah. She's a little giant bit. get on. I've created a media <laughs> She's got the blow dry, so she's yeah. set for the weekend, so we need to get her on camera. Um, okay, so <laughs> I, um, I, I was writing the book, and it was an amazing experience, an emotional experience. It was, it was everything. And I was getting to kind of the end bit, and I, I was thinking, I've kind of covered everything that I've been through, and that's great. But I know that if, if Jamie picks up this book in his local shop and brings it home, that there will still be unanswered questions from other people in that same house, and they were the parents. Um, and I, I can't write on behalf of mom and dad yeah. and, and how they felt. And at times, the way they felt uh, might be seen as problematic. But... It's the truth of the matter. When you your kid changes before your eyes, you believe they've changed. You've got to you've got to learn how to love mm. again. Um, so I said, "Mom, Dad, would you write this chapter?" And they said, "Absolutely." And it's actually one of my favorite parts of the book because it's so honest and so frank, and it's advice from parents to parents. Hey, he's just come out. She's just come out. They've just come out. Here's how you can support them and love them. Here's how you can get over your fear and shame um, of having a kid who's a bit different. Um, well said, and um, well done to your parents for for writing that. That's not an a, an easy thing to, to write, but it's also a really brave thing to be to put out there in the world. Um, as is all of your YouTubing. So you are a hugely successful YouTuber, and you do speak really openly and honestly and frankly about you know who you are are and like unashamedly so. Um, do you get a lot of hate ah, yeah. online ah, how yeah. do you deal with that <laughs> for all of those people out there that, mm. are, that are watching online yeah in the early stages when i started the channel at about 15 or 16 years old every hateful comment be it about my hair or something more drastic like you know the way i talked or just how i am and um, they really had a, a negative impact on me and i really believed what they were saying you know um and i went to the police about it and at the time they just said stop making videos that's the best thing for you to do because they didn't understand the And internet. they don't have the, probably the capacity to, to deal with it because they don't understand yeah. it. Yeah. And it went to, uh, you know, really high up people and they just said, just stop making videos. That's the best thing to do. Um, and I did. I, I stopped making them for years and I went into radio and I found my outlet elsewhere. But I'm back now and I'm older and I'm wiser and I'm <laughs> out and I really don't care what you think about me. Yeah. And you so probably don't read so much into those comments. Let the haters be the haters. Well, I, and I'm too busy. Yeah. I'm over here like... <laughs> I have a career. I'm hustling. <laughs> I'm doing yeah. stuff. Um, and when I do f come across the mean comments, now what I do is I take a screenshot and I sit with mom um, or a friend uh, with a giant glass of Sauvignon Blanc and we just... <laughs> We troll the trolls. We we read the mean comments and laugh at how how ridiculous those comments are, um, and we kind of take the sting out of them. It's there's, it's a power transaction. You're the troll. I'm the YouTuber, and you're saying, "Oh, you're an awful faggot at me, right?" And now I have a choice at that moment. I can take that in and feel it and and let it sort of fester inside of me, and sort of make me not make another video or make me feel scared when I go to school. Or I can go, uh uh, and I'm gonna shoot yeah. that energy back at you and go, I don't approve of this message. Sorry to take a Trumpism. <laughs> um, 
uh, and I uh, am going to flip it on its head and yeah. have a laugh, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Turn it into a positive. And that, I But mean, now, sorry, it's Simon. One thing that's happened from that is at the end of those mean comments videos, I put a call out and I'm like, hey, so, you know, mean comments, send them my way. So now people who actually like me are writing fake mean comments. Just so you'll have a They're reaction. like, oh, I hate you. You're <laughs> disgusting, burning hell. By the way, I actually love you at the end. So. I just want you to do a video about me. Yeah. <laughs> Um, let's talk about your podcast on uh, Radio 1. So you've done two series. Three. You're in series three, three yeah, now, aren't you? Series three, yeah. And it's called Unexpected Fluids. Yeah. I can and it's all that. about hairy sex situations. Yeah, it's... Um, talk to me. Sex gone wrong, so fails. You know, like, so you might be with your partner and you might be having a good time and then you fart. Or <laughs> there you are. <laughs> or, or worse. <laughs> Um, and then you feel awful <laughs> embarrassment and all of this. And with the podcast, we're trying to take the, the fear and embarrassment out of it. And we celebrate when sex goes wrong. So we have an amazing bank of listeners around the world who send us their stories. And we tell our own, probably told too many at this point. Um, and uh, it's just been a wild ride. You know, I, I always, uh, my career in radio began with a pirate radio station in my bedroom in County Wicklow. At Fair 15, play. my dad put an illegal antenna on the roof. Oh, shit. Um, <laughs> and my, my dream was always to get to... Dodgy Irish parents. Yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> but gotta love it. My dream was always to get to BBC Radio 1. And look at you now. It's mad. I, I literally came from there to here. Um, so it, I'm, I feel like yeah. I am so blessed and I, I've got some amazing people around me and I'm just loving it. I really But am. also hard work, perseverance, being good at what you do has got you there. It's yeah, not just... Hustler. And yeah, you know... Everyone loves a hustler. Yeah. Um, so also, you, you've talked about your YouTubing with, um, you know, how successful you are, but you, you're you really well known for one oh, certain clip Here we go. with your mum um, when you guys sit together with a large glass of Sauvignon, as you say, and you uh, read through your grinder messages. Yeah. And I think we have a clip of that <laughs> we're going to play in the studio right now. Lorraine wow. and Riyadh, everybody. <laughs> You know what, I have to say, it's an absolute testament to the openness that you and your mum share. But do you look back at that in regret at all? Or are you kind of like, you know no. what, I'm absolutely so I, happy that I, I know that. for a fact, Simon, that I wouldn't be sitting opposite you now if it wasn't for that one video. That video, when we put it out, it went viral overnight. Like, we woke up and my phone was warm, hot to touch from the amount of emails and calls and from media around the world. And it allowed me to kind of keep doing the YouTube thing, thing to grow it and to kind of showcase what a, a cool mother I have and that, you know, the YouTube channel was worth watching. So um, basically what you're saying is your mother really made She great. is my <laughs> momager. She is my Kris Jenner. I, to her, Kardash Kim Kardashian. She <laughs> has created this monster. <laughs> Well, look, your mum is in the audience now. We're going to have a little chat with her. Hello, Lorraine. Hi, how are how you? How are you? Good, thanks. The hair is looking great. Well, it was really <laughs> bad earlier on. I had to get it done. <laughs> so listen, how proud of you, how proud of you, how proud are you, should I say, of Riyadh? He's, 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 he's done amazing things, hasn't he? Since, yeah, since I, I'm, I'm amazed at what he's done so far. Like, in, even in the space of a year and a half, He's he's just flying it, aren't you, son? <laughs> Has he always been so open with um, with you guys? Yeah, from that's, a young age. That's the house we're we're in. We've always talked openly to each other, and I'm a good reader of how someone is feeling. So I'd always say, "Are you okay?" And I'd be able to read read the boys really well. So uh, it was all about talking in our house. Um, yeah. And um, obviously the book, the book is out, and it's an amazing um, encyclopedia for, for young gay men that are, you know, that either haven't come out or have come out and don't know what to do. Um, what do you hope that other parents will learn from from a book like this? Well, we didn't have it when Riyadh came out, so I was searching all of the help help groups, you know, like. Um, to. belong to and whatever over in Dublin um, because I, I just hadn't met anybody else that had a gay child before and what, what would I do and how would I advise, how would I be with Riyadh, uh, should I show my true feelings yeah. and, and whatever. So I just felt, even I read it again um, the other day, I, I just think it's wonderful that but because myself and Sam went through it, um, we're able to say, look, take a step back. Your head is like a washing machine. It'll settle down. 
Yeah, time is a healer. And, and time is a healer. And don't look too far forward because I did and I was saying, oh, he's not going to have kids and he's not going to do this. It's like the domino effect, the disaster. I, yeah, like uh, everything that you thought your child was going to be is not exactly the same way as what you imagined. So you just have to change your way of thinking. And all the fears that I had have not come true. It's been a much better experience. Uh, it's opened up a whole new world for myself and Sam. And we embrace everything that's gay. Um, and any parents, uh, we get a lot of parents contacting us through the YouTube channel or personally on my DMs. And sliding on <laughs> in there, you know, yourself. I sliding had, to Lorraine's DMs. I had one gone. last week and, and it was the one mother. She was very upset and she was sending me photographs of her boy. And she feels that now he's a girl. And I'm saying, no, you can't think that way. And she's just, she said she's like in a grieving process. But it is a bit like that at the beginning. But after that, it's like a rebirth. Yeah, and it's fine. And it gets it's better. You can deal with it together and as a family. I know there are some families that it won't be okay. But it's in a minority. If you, if you have even one parent that's supportive, I think that's enough. Or an auntie or an uncle. It doesn't yeah. have to be immediate, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, can we give it up for Lorraine, please? Yeah! <laughs> Ria, before we go, we do need to talk about your dad. So, yeah. you know, obviously when you came out to your dad, it was a bit of a difficult process and it was something that you guys had to, you know, deal with and kind of come to terms with. Um, do you wish a book like this had been out mm. for you then? And just tell us a bit about your, yourself and your dad's journey together. Yeah, I mean, we're, we were best, best friends, weren't we, Mum? All through my childhood. we go fishing every Sunday and we'd... Just like that, two peas in a pod. And then this was the one thing about myself that I thought, okay, this is going to end it. And you don't know, is it going to be him running away from the house or telling me to leave or worse? Um, but you kind of... Um, you manifest a false reality that you think is going to happen and then you come out and then you realise that actually this isn't ideal, his reaction. But, like Mum said, um, with the help of support and education and her giving him kind of, you know, an ultimatum, look, this is your family. you got to accept he's still your son. Nothing really has changed here. Um, it allowed him to kind of have an epiphany, a light bulb moment and... Um, and to re-embrace me as his mm. son. And uh, yeah, if I had that book, not only would it have taught me how to be more gentle with him, I rushed it. Right. I was like, I'm going to get married and I'm going to bring a guy here. We're going to have dinner together as a family and you need to accept it. And I was, I was just, I had done Snowballing. my four years of that yeah. PCO stage and I was just ready, too ready. Whereas I should have gone, okay, tell me about how you feel, Dad. You know, but I just love to, you know. Um, but also, you're like young. You just come out. You probably just want to, you know. You want to wear rainbows across your head. Exactly. And, you know, get a scream. rainbow tattoo, and <laughs> you're a walking one man pride march. Um, so it would have helped me in terms of being more gentle with him. But then I would have gone, "Hey, Dad, here, have read a little this. read of page yeah. two twenty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. That's all about pre cum Dad. <laughs> yeah. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. It's in the book. We're like, yeah. Right. He already knows. Um, about that. Listen, before we finish up, I just want to ask you, um, what one word of advice do you have for any, um, you know, gay or queer teens that maybe don't have somebody to talk to? that are at that point of thinking, you know, are, are, are coming out, are feeling like they can't come out to their friends and their family? Um, one word. I, I can I have two? No, no, it, it doesn't have to be a word. Oh, sorry. Like, what, give it what, a what bit of advice. Sentiment. Yes, our advice. I would say um, do everything you can to love yourself, every fibre of your being, and to know that you are not flawed, you are not wrong, you're not sick. There's nothing, nothing, nothing to be changed or altered here, okay? Um, be patient with yourself and with your journey because when you reach the destination of being out and proud and free, it's going to be like you, you've arrived at the doors of gay heaven. <laughs> Honestly, it is. You know, you're going to live this closeted life and it's a half-life. Yeah. It's like you're not even breathing. Yeah. It's, you know, the, the world is black and white and all of a sudden it's going to be rainbow colours. Yeah. So just um, love yourself, be authentic as much as you can in a safe way and try your best to um, either get to a location or to a, a mental space where you can finally go, hey, this is who I am. 
Um, and my bit of advice would be, you are not alone. Mm. You don't need to go through this. This is it. On your own. You've got family. You've got Simon. You. You've got friends. <laughs> You've got us. Just come yeah. and talk to us. <laughs> what I would say is you, you might feel like you're own, on your own. You're in your bed at night. You're, you're, you're sweating and you're worrying about what's going to happen if, if anyone finds out that I am LGBT. Um, there is that global community and it's not just a couple of people. It's hundreds of millions of people. Yeah. And just by default, just by you existing as, as an LGBT person, you've automatically got membership to a club. The most loving, fabulous, amazing club where if you go on holiday to the most obscure part of the world, you will find yeah. people who get you, who like you and want to have a pint with you <laughs> when you're of age. Um, so it's No underage drinking. Uh -uh. Um, Riyadh, that's all we've got time for. It's been so Thank you lovely for having, having you on the show. And listen, good luck with all of your endeavours with the podcast, with the book, with your YouTube. And can't wait to see what you do um, next. Unfortunately, that's all we've got time for with Riyadh. But his book, Yay, You're Gay, Now What? is out from May the 2nd. Um, and it's available for pre-order now. So go and grab yourself. It's actually out now. It's we actually did it earlier. We did it earlier. Now. It's actually out now. Uh, join us back here at 5.30 with Megan Barton Hansen from this year's Love Island. One time, one, for one more time, they'll give it up for Riyadh Khalif. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.